right place at the right time this morning? We came to church this morning, right? Let's make it better. We came into the house of the Lord this morning, didn't we? Come on, let's, let's make it better. We came as citizens of heaven in the house this morning. Come on, somebody. Not just as members and partners of a church, but as the citizens of heaven. Know that this morning we're going to eat a feast. Oh, somebody said they're hungry in the, in the house. Amen. <laughs> somebody said they're hungry. Somebody say, I'm hungry. Come on. You know what? Our 9 o'clock service, they came in. They were hungry this morning. You know, I just want to give you a little praise report. Our, our 9 o'clock service is growing more and more. Praise God. Come on, somebody. We, did, we had a great number this morning. I think it was higher than ever before. I'm not sure. But people are coming out from the woodworks. I'm telling you right now, right now, people are in need of a God. They are in need of a Savior. Come on, somebody. They are in need of a miracle. Come on, praise God. They are in need of a breakthrough. Praise God. And I'm telling you right now, God right now, he's in a good mood. He's in a season right now where he's pouring out for those of us who want and are diligently seeking him. The Bible says that those who do that, he will reward them. He's also known as a rewarder. Come on, somebody. Praise God. So listen, you don't have to, do, you don't have to put so much effort in your natural abilities. You just got to put, put your effort in your faith abilities. Right now it is time for faith to increase even more. And I've told you guys this before. Before, um, that these messages that God has given us insight in since the Transform series, and then we're now into the Root series, these, these messages are meant to increase our faith, all right? They are meant to increase our faith, to strengthen our faith, and to not have to be, uh, you know, moved or influenced by any outside uh, interference that you're not going to be moved by it. Come on, you're going to be solidified. You're going to be established in your faith. Your roots are going to go deep into him. Praise God that you're not, you're, you're not going to be easily moved by just some little wind that blows here and there. Come on, somebody. You, you know what I'm saying? Your faith is going, to, is going to be super strong, and it's going to get you to where you need to get to. All right? How many of y'all can believe that in the house this morning? Amen. Praise God. It's a powerful time right now, guys, and we've got about two Let's see, we're in October, so we got about two and a half more months left of this year. And, uh, and uh, I'm going to say something, and this is not going to sound very encouraging, okay? It's not, but it's very true, all right? But here's the deal. It's not going to get any easier out there, all right? It's not. Let me just tell you that. So we have a choice, though, not to participate in those activities out there. Now, that can mean anything from being sick to the wildness and craziness that's going on out there. But here's, 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 here's the encouraging side to that. Those who are willing to stick with the Lord, it's going to get better. Amen. Come on, somebody. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get better. Our, our, our eyesight's going to get better. Our, I mean, uh, I say that, but yesterday I was telling my wife, I said, you know, you know, for many years, guys, I've, I've experienced colorblindness, and it's, it's always been like this. This weird deal where I can't see the difference between red and green, blues and purples, things like that. But uh, here recently, God, and I've been praying, said, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I don't, I don't want to be colorblind anymore. I'm, I'm healed from that in the name of Jesus. Listen, more and more, I'm starting to see color. I mean, even to the point where this little light right here, see, I didn't used to know if it was red or, or green. I didn't know if it was on or off. I didn't know if it was muted or what. I just like, that's red, but it's green. See that? I can see that. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Woo. I'm excited. Y'all guys ain't excited because y'all can see all the colors. Nobody has nothing. But for me, it's like, man, I'm starting to see the colors. Like, I can see them. My little daughter has this little jumper that she jumps on, and it's full, colorful. And I was pointing out to her. I said, look, babe, look, that's yellow. That's green. That's blue. That's red. She's like, yeah, that's what that is. I was like, mm. inside me, I was like, Ooh. But watch this. I'm giving all glory to the Lord, man. Because, oh, I almost felt like getting emotional. But <coughs> I'm saying, <laughs> this is how good God is. He can do the impossible. He is the great physician. Come on. He's the bread of life. He's the prince of peace. Boy, here we go. Here we go. We're giving praise to God now. Are y'all with me? He's the lifter of your head. Come on. Praise God. 
He's the, he's the, oh, here we go. He's the, he's the lily in the valley. Come on, praise God. Come on, somebody. Hey, 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 hey. He's our great God. He's our redeemer, man. Praise the Lord. He's our restorer. He's good at restoring marriages. Don't look around. He's good at restoring relationships. He's good at, at building a business. He's good at turning your financial deficits into financial overflow. Come on. Amen. Clap your hands. Somebody in this house. He's good at taking away our sins. He's good at restoring our minds. He's that good. And watch this. And he's your God. And this morning, if some of you would just believe, don't try to figure it out. Just faith it in. You'll see. Like right now, Brother Ralph, right now, while you're sitting in that bench, I said bench. Not, it's not, while you're sitting right there in that bench, B-E-N-C-H, God can do something in you, in you, in you, in me, while we're sitting in this, in this little room right here. Watch this, believing the whole time. Don't stop believing. Believing God at what he's going to do. Believing God at his word. Believing God at his promise. I'm preaching this morning already, guys. Come on, somebody. I already ate my Wheaties this morning. I done had church this morning. So we're ready. Y'all, y'all going to get the fullness of it in this house this, this morning, all right? Y'all came to the right place at the right time. Praise God. So we're going to continue on the Root Series. This is part five. We've been on five services uh, on the Root And I believe, I'm not sure quite yet, but I think we may uh, finish up this series this Wednesday. So please make sure to uh, to either be here Wednesday night at 7 o'clock or follow us on Facebook Live. It will it will be on Facebook Live. Uh, So as we finish this up, I might or might not just depends how the Lord wants to go with that. But for this morning, we're going to get into this now. I did say earlier that these messages are all geared towards increasing your faith because we've got some things coming up ahead that is going to require faith and faith alone. Okay, like our natural self is not going to be able to take care of what's coming up ahead. Uh, Scientists and doctors and medical staff and all these other people, they're going to be scratching their head because they don't know what to do, but they're going to call Daniel's in. Come on, somebody. They're going to call Joseph's in. Come on, somebody. Uh, They're going to call Paul's in. Praise God. All right, they're going to call in people who have that faith in God and strictly faith in God, and boom, you're going to see that God's going to do some great exploits through each and every one of us in this house. So prepare yourself. We're not just going to go through a whole home life anymore. Those days are gone. The religious days are gone. The powerless days are gone. It's time for somebody to be able to stand up in the power of God Almighty, come on somebody, and release their faith and say something, and boom. Listen, I I was at a, I, I went to a convenience store yesterday, and I seen this young man. I said, hey, bro, how you doing? He said, hey, how you doing, man? I didn't even recognize you because I have my mask on. You know, you don't recognize people. You have to know their eyes to recognize them. Anyway, so I was there. Hey, I didn't recognize them. Hey, said, oh, I'm good, man. He said, hey, how you doing, man? I said, oh, I'm doing great, this and that. I said, how are you? He said, well, I'm doing all right, man, despite the circumstances. It's just that, you know, man, I just, I, I'm in need of a job, man. I, I, you know, I, I don't have a job right now, man. And, and so I said, well, bro, you know, it's just, don't worry about it, man. God's going to show up. Watch this. By the time he went back to the refrigerator in the back to grab his drink, to the time that he got up to the front, he was looking at his phone. He goes, he goes, hey, I think I might just have a job. I said, come on. He said, man, bro. I said, well, he said, man, things are starting to look better. I'm going to believe this because I was there. The presence of God was there. Come on. I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be, come on, somebody. I'm not trying to be all uh, prideful or nothing. I'm just saying I know who I carry on the inside of me. And when he shows up, things change. It's the same goes for you, too. When you show up to a place, something good begins to start happening. Come on, somebody. That's why you got to have confidence in him and start letting the spirit of God move in those places, man. And don't be afraid. Praise God. Just If you have to, right before you walk into that store, you know, but and then you get up in there and really just, hey, man, come on, somebody. <laughs> hey, we can have fun in the kingdom of God. Let me tell you that right now. It's super good. I don't know about you, but when I see somebody get healed, whoo, boy, that, that, just touch, that just does something on the inside. makes me want to do a little jig, you know what I mean? Or when I see somebody get saved, shh, it just, the joy of the Lord kicks in, man. Why? Because in heaven, they're rejoicing. 
They're throwing un porazo up there in heaven. When somebody gets saved, the angels start, come on. They start dancing and todo, you know. So anyways. <clears throat> All right. So we're going to finish off this morning on the root. And uh, I'm going to take you to a couple of new scriptures today. Um, and then ultimately I want to end with sharing um, a scenario in the Bible where Jesus uh, had an encounter with a father of a young lady. And if we can get to it, I'm not sure we can. We weren't able to get to it this morning. <clears throat> also, in another, another scenario where Jesus uh, had an encounter with, uh, with the father of a young boy. And, uh, and so we're going we're gonna to get to what we need to get to this morning. Because th this idea of that whatever God didn't plant on the inside of you that he's going to root up, that he's going to pull up from the roots, that is truth. All right. Now, some of us may be thinking, well, I don't see God doing anything right now. Pastor, I've heard the messages and I've received and everything, but it just seems like nothing's going on. This is for you this morning, because there is a listen, there is a principle in the word of God that we need to pull out. Because see, when you receive a principle, principles are meant to be applied. So when you get the principle of the word of God, now you can apply it and get results. If you don't look at it in that manner, are you going to see, well, it's just a little ink on paper. It's just that's what the Bible says. That's lovely. And you're going to leave it right here at the church and not take it with you out there at home. But we need to pull the principle out so that we can take it with us and apply it and get the same results that Jesus got. Come on, somebody. Amen. Praise God. Someone say amen. amen. All right. Let's get right into this thing this morning. Turn with me into Matthew 15, 13. All right. This is the, uh, this is the scripture for this series. <clears throat> And it says this, it says, every tree that wasn't planted by my father in heaven will be pulled up by its roots. So I say every tree. Every. Now, that, that, that's not talking about every tree out there, like those two trees that are out there. Or, you know, God planted those. And, of course, the ones he didn't plant, he's going to pull up on the roots. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the, the plant, the trees that were planted on the inside of us. By a seed, a seed was planted on the inside of us from the time that we were little up until now. There's been a lot of seeds that were planted, and some of those seeds were seeds that were not planted by God. And God said that those seeds, and, and we never took care of them, and we didn't know what to do with those seeds. So what they did was they grew up into trees, and now they're giving out fruit. And Jesus put it this way, that you will know them by their fruit. So in other words, people are only going to see the fruit that you have. And if that fruit is not fruitful or if that fruit is rotten, then that's the fruit that people see. It's not that they don't like you. It's just that you're just producing things that are not good, not even for you or for them, for anybody. And that's why probably a lot of people see you and look at you all weird because, man, there's just something weird about that person. It's the thing is, you're just handing out this kind of fruit, right? It's kind of like when you go to a restaurant and somebody tells you to go to this restaurant because it's the best food ever, you should go check it out. Well, you get there, and next thing you know, the eggs are runny, the bacon's burnt, the toast is all burnt, the service was bad. You're like, man, I ain't going back to that place no more. Man, you lied to me, man. That was the worst place ever. They're like, no, man, at one point, well, here's the same deal. It's not that you don't like the place. It's not that you didn't like what they served you. So that's the same concept when it comes to us. It's just that we're serving things that we had no control over when those seeds were planted in us several years ago. And now God's saying, don't worry, because I'm going to pull those things up from the roots. Yeah. So we're like, well, okay, Pastor, well, I've been in those services and I received it. But you know what? I still don't see anything going on. Well, this morning, God's going to give us a principle on what to do about that. Okay? Because let me tell you, like I told you earlier, God said, I am doing something. I am behind the scenes. Don't you give up in your believing on me or trusting in me. Continue to increase your faith this morning. Come on, somebody. Amen? Amen. All right. Let me take you through two scriptures real quick before we get into the scenario. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17. Let's pull that one out first. It says this. Then by constantly using your faith. Somebody say faith. By constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside you. Ooh. And the resting place of his love will become the very source 
and root of your life. Man, come on, somebody. Somebody say faith. faith. So notice that we're going to have to do something. We're going to have to be consistent in our faith. It says there, then by constantly using, you can use something you haven't acquired. Come on, somebody. So we got to keep using that. That's the key here this morning. Keep using your faith. That means you got to keep getting, hearing the word of God so that it can come. So constantly by using your faith, the life of Christ will will be released deep. So the more you use your faith, the more Christ will be released deeper and deeper on the inside of you. Come on. Forming you more and more into his image. You even, even when you look in the mirror, you'll be like, mira, me miro más como Cristo. You'll be like, man, I look more like Jesus. Praise God. Come on, somebody. <laughs> when everybody else thinks you ugly as a mother, but you're like, hey, 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 I look like Jesus. You better, you better recognize. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, so, so Christ will be released deep inside you and the resting place of his love, oh, this is so good right here, man, will become the very source and root of your life. Oh, man. Well, I don't know how to love. Keep using your faith. Keep believing. Let's go to another scripture. What's this? Colossians 2, 7. It says this. Your spiritual roots... Go deeply into his life as you are continually infused with strength, encouraged in every way, for you are established in the faith. Someone say faith. Faith. You have absorbed. That means you've taken it in. You've received it. You've picked up on it. You've believed it. You're walking in it. Come on. You're established in the faith. You have absorbed and enriched by your devotion to him. Again, what is that saying? There has to be some consistency. There has to be some flow. There has to be a continual flow. You got to keep getting in his word. You got to keep praying. You got to keep coming to church. You got to keep hearing a word of faith that's going to increase on the inside of you. Because here it says you will be continually infused with strength and and encouraged in every way. You know what that tells me? The discouragement level begins to start dropping. Again, well, I don't see anything happening. Keep believing. Because eventually you're going to get to that place where you'll be established in your faith and you won't just be hearing this and hearing that and believing everything that's being told to you. No, you are established in your faith. And God becomes your source and he becomes your root. Praise somebody in this house is going to be delivered, be set free this morning. All right. Did y'all guys get that? Say amen if y'all got that. All right. Let's go into the scenario with Jesus here. All right. Now, it's going to be kind of two things at at the same time. Uh, I'm not going to take you into the the, uh, interruption that happened, but I'm going to talk about it just a little bit because I need need you to hear how Jesus addressed her and what he said to her. But we're going to first talk about the young girl. All right, so let's go into Matthew chapter 5, <clears throat> starting in verse 21 through 24, and then we're going to 34 through 43. All right, now we're going to read it out of the Passion Translation. I could take you into the King James, but listen, this right here gives it a little bit clearer, and you can go back and study out of the King James yourself, and you'll see that it's the same thing being said. All right, guys, so let's go here, starting in uh, verse 21. <clears throat> it says this, after Jesus returned from across the lake, so Jesus likes going to the lake. Come on, you fishermen. <laughs> a huge crowd of people quickly gathered around him on the shoreline. So huge crowds of people like to hang around with Jesus. All right. Just then, a man saw that it was Jesus. So he pushed through the crowd and threw himself down at Jesus' feet. And his name was Jairus. And he was a Jewish official who was in charge of the synagogue. So this guy was a leader. He was the head of of that city, of that town. Okay? He was someone of something of importance. But yet, he found the necessity for Jesus. As a matter of fact, it it implies to me that 
he knew something about Jesus. He knew that Jesus could do something about something. All right, so let's keep on learning here. Watch this. He pleaded with Jesus saying over and over, please come with me. My little daughter is at the point of death and she's only 12 years old. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. How many of you here got children? How many of you know that when your children get sick, you're going to tend to that child and do the best that you can? But in this scenario, this little girl wasn't just sick. She was at the point of dying. And this gentleman, listen to what he says to Jesus. He says, come and lay your hands on her and heal her and she will live. This man had some information, probably leading to revelation, about Jesus that, for one, he had the power to lay hands on somebody. Number two, heal them. And number three, bring them back to life. Now, I'm going to ask you the question, do you believe that? Because watch this. If. We are in a transformation process, which we are. And we're going to allow God to pull the trees that he didn't plant up from the roots. And right now, you're not feeling like anything is going on and happening. Watch this. Three things you got to certainly believe and know is that Jesus will lay hands on me. Jesus will heal me. And Jesus will cause me to live. Come on. Praise God. You got to believe that out there Facebook Live, because if not, man, you're going to miss the whole thing. You're just going to be coming to church just to hear a little message and go home and live out a life with no power. Okay? But that's not us. Someone say, that's not us. Okay. Let's keep on going. And then it says, immediately, immediately, I love the fact that Jesus just said, immediately, Jesus went with him. And the huge crowd followed pressing in on him from all sides. Now, watch this. Here comes Jairus. This is a, a leader, official in the, in the city, right? He has a sick daughter at home. He goes, looks for Jesus, and pleads with them, please come to my house and heal my daughter, 12-year-old. And there they go, and they're heading over to the house, and all of a sudden, Here comes an interruption. A woman who had an issue of blood, very ironic that she had it for 12 years. There's a 12-year-old problem, and then there's a 12-year-old girl. Okay, here we go. So Jesus had to take care of a 12-year-old problem, which which he was already prepared for to deal with because he was on his, on his way to take care of a 12-year-old problem, a 12-year-old girl, right? But this woman, didn't. she's like, I don't even have, need to have a conversation with Jesus. I don't need to talk to him face to face. All I need to do is touch the hem of his garment, and I know that I will be healed. I think that this woman knew that Jesus was on his way to do something else, and she was like, I'm not going to bother him. But can I at least touch the hem of his garment? And and, and then she said, but and I know that if I can touch the hem of his garment, somebody need to reach out right here by faith right now. I know that if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. You know what she did? She did it. And the moment she touched that hem, Jesus said, virtue has left my body. Somebody touched me. And everybody's like, Jesus, everybody's touching you. What do you mean somebody? He said, no, somebody touched me. Well, watch this. Okay, then he turns around, and he has a conversation with this woman. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I was Jairus, I would have been like, "Uh, Jesus, uh, we don't have time to talk to that woman. Like, my daughter, remember? My, my daughter, she's on the verge of dying. Now, uh, we, we need, come on, let's go. I mean, I think some of us were probably in that state right now, like, Jesus, wait, what about me? 
What about my situation? Are, are we there? Watch this. And Jesus is like, oh, hold on. Well, he, he, he tells him something here in a minute. Watch this. But then he's like, wait, hold on, Jairus. I got to take care of this. And listen to what Jesus tells this woman with the issue of blood. He says this in verse 34. Then Jesus said to her, the woman with the issue of blood, he called her daughter. She's now in the family. Daughter, because you dared to believe, <laughs> your faith has healed you. Do we have any people in this house who are just daring to believe? Praise God. Come on. Are you, I dare you, as a matter of fact, I'm going to put this out. I double dog dare you to believe. Praise God. You keep believing because your faith is going to heal you. Even though you were, you were not the one that Jesus was actually going to heal, he's still going to heal you. Some of y'all sitting in church like, man, well, I know they're going to heal them because maybe they're worshiping real strong. Oh, I know they're going to heal them because they're dressed real nice. And wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. He's going to heal you if you have the faith to believe. You need to start coming into church. I'm, I, you know what? You, I'm, you dare me to believe today, Pastor. I'm ready. Because this woman dared to believe. And that's a good, that's a good thing to do right there. Because she dared to believe. He said, your faith has healed you. Go with peace in your heart and be free from your suffering. God. So I say, amen. amen. Praise God. So watch this. So now he does that. Jairus is waiting like. He sees this happen, and here comes another set of problems. Watch this. And before he had finished speaking, some people arrived from Jairus' house and pushed through the crowd to give Jairus this news. Listen to what they said. There's no need to trouble the master any longer. Your daughter has died. Oh, my gosh. Now, right there, I can just picture Jairus saying, see, Jesus, why did you have to stop with this woman, man? I mean, if we probably could have made it. I mean, God, you could have done something about it. We, we could have been there to my house already, but no, you had to stop with this woman over here with the issue of blood for 12 years. Some of us may be feeling that right now. Jesus, why aren't you doing anything right now? How come I feel like there's no pulling up of roots or nothing, and I've been listening and hearing my faith and thought, why isn't anything happening? Well, how come they're getting healed? Mira, they're getting all the over there. They're dancing and praising the Lord. Oh, how about them over there? I'm just hearing praise reports, and what's going on? And then you start getting bitter. You let that root of bitterness start kicking in. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. But listen to what Jesus tells Jairus next. Watch this. He said, Jesus refused to listen to what they were told. And then he said to Jairus, don't yield to fear. That's principle number one for you in this house this morning. Don't yield to fear. I'm doing something. Just trust me. Don't yield to fear. Number one. Second one. All you need to do is to keep on believing. Principle number two, keep on believing. You keep your trust going that God's on the scene for you already. He is pulling up those roots. Uh, he's pulling up those trees that he did not plant on the inside of you. You may not see what's going on, but you don't need to see. All you need to do is believe. Uh, believe that I am doing something. Did you already pray? I already prayed. Then, then believe me and keep on believing. Number one, don't yield to fear. And don't let anybody else tell you that your situation ain't going to change. Because that's what they told him. Your daughter's already dead. Don't even bother Jesus anymore. That's what you're going to have people telling you. Why do you keep going to church? You don't see that things ain't changing? Look at him. Look at her. Look at them. Why are you still going? Don't listen to that mess. 
your transformation process is in effect right now. And God's doing something. You can't let nothing disrupt or distract your transformation process. That's what I said Wednesday. You can't let anyone or anything disrupt or distract your transformation process, including your own family members that see that your daughter is dead. You know that's the facts? But did you know that not all facts are the truth? There's a lot of people, they like that. You know what? Give me the facts. What are the facts? Well, the facts may not be the truth. And the facts are not going to make you free. It's only the truth that makes you free. Yes, the facts is that she may be dead in a bed. But the truth is, by my stripes, she is healed. Oh, <laughs> come on now. That's the truth. You know, I've encountered so many times people tell me, hey, man, why, why are you telling that they're healed, man? Don't you say that they're all sick? They're all tied up to machines and, and this and that. You're, over there, you're, you're like giving them false hope. No, I'm giving them truth. And the truth will make them free. And, and they're like, no, nah, man, I don't, I don't, that's just a bunch of lies, a bunch of men. I said, no, 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 that's just the truth. Next thing you know, boom, they're out of the hospital and they're doing better. Healed in Jesus' name. Come on. Come on, somebody. Praise God. So here it is. He's. He's like telling them, <clears throat> don't you worry about that. Watch, he says, all you need to do is keep on believing. So they left for his home, but Jesus didn't go. He, he didn't allow anyone to go with him except Peter and the two brothers, Jacob and John. It says, when they arrived at the home of the synagogue ruler, they encountered a noisy uproar among the people. For they were all weeping and wailing. It's interesting. He used the word weeping. Like, <laughs> and wailing. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, all right, so. And listen to what Jesus, Jesus goes in. Upon entering the home, Jesus said to them, why all this grief and weeping? I bet he said it kind of like, what's his name, that comedian? Why are you crying? You know, that type of thing. You know what I'm and so there, there he is. Why are you grieving and weeping? And then he says this next statement. Don't you know the girl's not dead but merely asleep? I mean, come on now. The natural-minded person is going to look at Jesus and say, that loco. Right? That's what they're going to say. As a matter of fact, the next line says, then everyone begin to ridicule and make fun of Jesus. Can I tell you something, guys? Listen, your faith has got to stay connected with your family members, your friends, your coworkers, your bosses, and even your favorite person in the world tells you otherwise or they laugh at you because of your faith. You, you, gotta, you, gotta, you, you can't, don't, don't go with that. Or, another, or, or better yet, maybe you can do what Jesus did next after they laughed at him. It says, but... He threw them all outside. <laughs> like, I don't need you here. You know what? Uh-uh. If you ain't going to believe with me, get out the room. And I said this Wednesday night. I said, listen, there are going to be some people. You're going to have to kind of move out of the way for this season because they're being a disruption and a distraction to your transformation process. It's biblical to kind of throw them out to the side for a season. Jesus did the same thing. Y'all, every you, like, está riendo. Ya con los dientotes, era, hey. Vete pa' fuera. I don't need you in here. Get out. You, 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 and who are you? Anyway, y'all all, oh, get out. Vete, get out. Get out of here. But I need certain people that have faith to stay in this room with me. Oh, yeah, that's what he said. Look, he goes on next and he says, uh, uh, he threw them out. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, then he took the child's father and mother and his three disciples. Some say five. Five is the number of grace. Jesus walked in with grace into that room. Undeserved favor walked up into that room with this little girl who was just asleep. <laughs> but to everybody else, she was dead, ta muerta. No. Jesus says, no. That's the facts. But the truth is, she's just asleep. 
This is where faith has to come into play. And a lot of people, you know, I hear, I, I heard this the other day. It was, it was, it was, it was kind of neat to hear this, but they were like, yeah, man, you know, <clears throat> so-and-so, they're realist. I was like, realist? What does that mean? He goes, yeah, they, they, don't, they don't believe too much in the whole faith thing. Like, they need to see it. Like, it has to be, like, the realist. That, that's, you know, if, if I can't see it, then I know that's not true. I'm like, whoa, yeah, I see that. That's why Jesus had to make us in his image and in his likeness. Because we are and are going to be the representation of Jesus here on this earth. Okay, so he said, uh, <clears throat> then he took his child, the child's father and mother and his three disciples, and they went into the room where the girl was lying. And he tenderly clasped the child's hand in his. Somebody needs to get a hold of Jesus in this room. Because he's about to do something. Like right now. Somebody in your mind right now, you got to let go of all this realist stuff and tap into faith. Understand that he can do the impossible. It says that Jesus clasped the child's hand in his, and he said to her in Aramaic, Talitha Koam, which means, little girl, wake up from the sleep of death. Watch this. Instantly, the 12-year-old girl sat up, stood to her feet, and started walking around the room. <sighs> Listen, guys. All these roots and all these seeds that have been tormenting you, they've popped up inside your, they've kept you there. They've kept you asleep. They've kept you kind of dead, feeling like you're dead. They've kept you in this place where you can't really walk around so much. You don't feel free. But I'm here to tell you this morning, it's the word that you hear is what's going to make you free. See, you can't try to figure out life. You can't try to figure this thing out. No, well, I don't believe that Jesus did. I've never seen Jesus down a cross. I've never seen Jesus walk around here anywhere. He's never done miracles. No, but watch this. This is why he gave us this text. So that we could have something now to believe in. And primarily him and Jesus and the Holy Spirit to be able to believe that he is going to do a work on the inside of you, that you are his workmanship, and he will finish what he started. Come on, somebody. He will finish. He will pull up from the roots those things that weren't planted by him on the inside of you, and he's going to take them out. The worst thing, he's going to cut them down from the roots. Everyone was overcome with astonishment. In seeing this miracle. Can I, tell you, can I tell you something this morning? People are going to see a miracle in you. People are going to hear a miracle through you. You're going to become that miracle to people. You're going to become that very presence of Jesus to people. Jesus may even show them a glimpse of Jesus. As they look at you, whoa, man, you look like Jesus all of a sudden. What was that about? It's so that you might believe, man. You're going through all this stuff unnecessarily. You're going through stuff because you don't want to believe. You're going through stuff because you have stuff on the inside of you that, sometime, that somebody planted and it wasn't God and it's messing you up. You can't see past all this. But it's time that God begins to take those trees and pull them up from the roots. Watch this. And replace it with him. So that you can be constant in your faith and your roots will go deep down into him. And then his love will be your source and your root of life. Praise God. That's it. Y'all guys get that this morning? I'm telling you, God's up to something amazing and incredible. And it's time for us to see this. Um. I want to end with Mark 5.36 in the New Living Translation. 
It's the same, it's the same scripture that up here where we read, don't yield to fear and all you need to do is keep on believing. But I like the way it says in the New Living Translation. It says, but Jesus overheard them and he said to Jairus, and he's saying to you this morning, don't be afraid. Just have faith. Can I say that again? Don't be afraid. Just have faith. I'm going to say that one more time to somebody in this house. Don't be afraid. Just have faith. 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 Because faith is what's going to take us to where we need to get to. Are y'all with me this morning? Did y'all receive that in the house? Amen. Stand to your feet. We're going to pray out. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. And I always like to sing at the end of the service, but I don't know how to sing very good, so. Y'all don't agree with me. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Mm. A lot of those things are, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. See, a lot of that sister Aurora right there comes from those seeds that were planted a long time ago. You know what I mean? And they're trees are now. They're trees now. It, yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Yep. There's a, there's a story in the Bible. I know we're going to get out of here. Y'all guys are probably hungry. The intestines are already, you know, brrr, and all that. There's a story in the Bible where uh, Jesus heals this young man. And he puts mud on his eyes. And then when he cleans it off, he says, he opens up his eyes and he says, what do you see? And he said, well, I see people. He says, but they look like trees. All right. Now, most people would say, well, I guess Jesus had to do it two times because it didn't stick the first time. And they try to preach that. Like it didn't stick. That Je No, Jesus does things intentionally. The reason why he did that is to let us know, first of all, that's what people are. They are like trees. And Jeremiah says that. In Psalms 1, it says that they shall be like a tree planted. So he gave him that revelation to that young man before he gave him his full sight so that he could see the reality of it is. He says, I see people, but they look like trees. So that's what it is. A lot of those seeds that were planted on the inside of us a long time ago, and now they've sprouted up and grown into trees, and now they're producing all this fruit. That's weird. Some weird, crazy stuff. But I'm going to tell you right now, just like Legion, in the Bible in Legion, Luke chapter 5, I believe, he got healed. Remember? Legion means over 2,500 demons. And when Jesus showed up, boom, threw him in some pigs, and he got healed. The Bible says that he was sitting up, and he was in his right mind. Damn. Father, in the mighty come on, let's pray for Cynthia. Father, in the mighty powerful name of Jesus, we declare over Cynthia right now, God, the peace of God which passes all understanding, the comfort of the Holy Spirit to comfort her heart, and the wisdom of God to give her understanding, Lord. We thank you, Father, right now, Lord, that there is a hedge of protection around her, a shield of faith, a force of light, a wall of fire, encamping around Cynthia and her family, Lord, that they will not be harmed mentally, physically, spiritually, that they will not be contaminated by fear, but that they would walk by faith, believing God 
for a complete restoration, Lord. And I thank you that you've given them a heart to forgive, Father. And, Lord, because of that, Lord, I know that you are at work in that family. And we cancel all works of the devil. You are defeated. You are under their feet. And you have no say. So, Satan, you are bound. And we send you back to the pits of hell where you belong. You have no authority, no say so over that family. We call it done. It is finished. And we ask these things in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus, the great I am. And everybody said. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give God a praise in the house. Now listen, <clears throat> at this point, as you guys make your way out, we do give you the opportunity to sow into the kingdom of God. Now, I said sow, not give. Now you can give, praise God, there's nothing wrong with giving because, you know, you have a heart to give and that's fine. But when you sow, there's a difference. It's kind of like the difference between facts and truth. It's two different things. Well, giving and sowing are two different things. One, you give because of the kindness of your heart and you give, you probably don't get nothing in return. But when you sow... That's the difference. When you sow, just like a farmer, when he sows a cotton seed in April, he reaps a cotton harvest in October. Come on, somebody. Amen. So it's the same manner in the same way. You got to look, be able to change the perspective. Giving and sowing, two different things. So this morning, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to encourage you, sow into the kingdom of God. Sow your best seed into the kingdom of God and see the, the harvest that you will reap coming from it. Because if all you do is just give to the church, that's all that's going to happen. Amen. Praise God. And But when you sow seed into the kingdom of God, come on, somebody, you will reap back a harvest that will come back and you'll be able to not only be blessed, but you'll be a blessing to others. Did y'all guys get that? Now, if you give, if you give by envelope, that's fine. But if you give, that's fine. But if you also give by text to give, the information will be up on the board for you guys to be able to text mobile giving and uh, do it that manner and do it that way. God bless each and every one of you. I hope you guys got something this morning. On behalf of my wife and I and baby Remy and all of our family here at Family Face Center, we just want to say God bless each and every one of you. Have an amazing rest of the week. We'll see you right back here again Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. or Facebook Live. Thank you. You are dismissed. Hello, family. Thank you so much for your giving. Here are a couple ways that you can give. You can mail in your offering to P.O. Box 686, Snyder, Texas, 79550. Or you can text your offering to 325-400-2829. These are a few secure and safe ways to give. We thank you so much, and we treasure your offering, and we call it blessed in Jesus' name.